All righty. Good morning, fellas. How are we doing today? We can actually stream today, actually be here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We have quite the day planned. But first, I want to say many of you may have noticed yesterday my, I had internet issues and I couldn't go live, okay? So unfortunately, I wasn't able to stream yesterday. It was super unfortunate. You guys missed out on a stream, missed out on a stream recap, and I do apologize for that. So you know what? I had a rough day. I was frustrated and I did what any adult would do. I went and I made pizza rolls and I played Guitar Hero 3. But now we're here today, okay? What's up? What's up? Good morning. Good morning. We have some Pokemon to go collect over in our GTL. We're going to grab all that 226K added to the stack. Always nice to see more added. Put me up over 38 million Pokemon. And I'm still 55,653 encounters dry. Could be a lot worse. Not so bad. But you know what? Still quite dry. We're going to head over to Rune Valley. I'm feeling lucky today. We're going to have a Gamba in chat on whether or not I do get a shiny today. I'm going to head to the south uh, west corridor of Island 6 in Kanto. We're going to head down there. We are going to hunt for shiny Yanma slash Jolteon. However, I did just remember, thankfully, you do actually need a runaway Pokemon if you're going to go down there since there is Wobbuffet spawn. So we're going to go grab that really quick over the place of our Chandelure, which you don't need. We're going to head down there and we're going to see what happens. We're going to see if I can get lucky today, break the streak and get a pretty cool shiny in the process. What hidden ability do they come out with next? It really could be anything. It's, it's really a shot in the dark to guess what hidden abilities are coming out in like a new rotation or a new a new batch, I guess. One of the hidden abilities I would like to see the most, please, I would love Poison Boost or po Toxic Boost, Zangoose. Um, Zangoose is a really, really cool Pokemon that has generally been pretty decent in lower tiers throughout Pokemon's history, but it's pretty unusable right now in Pokemon. Even in the NU tier, it's just so ridiculously outclassed. All this thing can do is be fast and hit hard, and it doesn't exactly do that well. As you can see, it's attacked at 115, speed 90. That's it. That's pretty pitiful, in my opinion. So, would love to see this thing get Toxic Boost. And then even if it got Toxic Boost, it probably still wouldn't be usable, honestly, nowadays. Like, if it got Toxic Boost two years ago, two to three years ago, it might have been usable. But they've just waited so long to buff Zangoose. So, much love to the Zangoose fans out there. It's a rough life for you at the moment. Do Sweet Scent Hordes work with farming legendaries? No, you do have to single encounter for legendaries. You can't get legendaries via Sweet Scent Summon Hordes. Really quick, good question. Starting Unova today, any Mon recommendations? I would pick up a Sandile and a Straggy, hopefully both with Moxie and Decent Nature. While you're in Unova, it's on like Route 4, it's like that desert area. It's really, really easy to just pick those guys up. Even a Darumaka, like that that, that route just has incredible Pokemon. Like Sandile, Straggy, Darumaka can all be so good in the storyline. I would just pick up all three of those, honestly. Get decent-ish ones. You don't need anything crazy, but like if you can, 20 plus in attack and speed, even like 15 plus in attack and speed on all those mons with like naughty, lonely, adamant nature should all work decently. Yeah, if I were to guesstimate the population of the game, people don't realize how big Pokemon is because there's a language barrier between a large amount of the community. This is this is numbers that I'm pulling out of my ass, so keep that in mind. I'm just guesstimating based off of anecdotal experience, but I would guesstimate that around like 50% of the Pokemon community is Chinese and speaks Mandarin, and then like 30% is uh, Spanish speaking, it comes from var various Spanish speaking regions, and then 20% is is like American or US or English speaking or other. Um, so, you know, if you're English speaking, you only see like 20% of the player base, and I feel like the from what I've seen, the Spanish speaking player base is larger, and then even larger than that is the Mandarin speaking player base. So it, the game is a lot larger than you realize, you just don't always interact with with those with players that are across the language barrier yeah starting june 4th i'll probably be able to do a lot more webcam streams once i move into um my new place coming up there will be a lot more webcam streams in the future starting june 4th forward uh when did pokemon get popular in the chinese community this is a fantastic question because uh, it didn't happen for a while uh pokemon was not big in china until like 2017 2019 it was somewhere around that year. I think what happened was, I think Pokemon got a Mandarin translation. Like it got a translation um, and that allowed them to like play the, actually play the game for the first, because they couldn't play the game for a very, very long time. Um, uh, do they have Chinese characters in their OT? No. Uh, if, if you have Chinese character in your OT, it gets translated like this. This is a great example. Usernames like this that seem like gibberish, like this, perfect example. These are translated from Chinese characters and they often make no sense. So like almost all of these names that you see, these like, oh, it's such a good example. Um, these are probably all, this is probably an English player. Um, this 
could be either but a lot of these names like this like a lot of this stuff is probably chinese characters being translated like this this is all chinese characters being translated like, like what is this eight out of ten of the first of the pokemon on the first page are all from chinese players um that's why you see so much of that yeah it makes a lot of sense are there any pokemon slash abilities taken out of the game that some players still have um there's weird things like level 17 Gyaradoses, which used to be caught in the wild, and obviously it evolves at level 20. That's kind of strange. And then uh, the main thing is 255 Eevee trained Pokemon. I actually saw one the other day. Um, let's see if it's still on the market. These are super, 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 super rare and kind of hard to explain how they exist. Um, not seeing it. It was a Nido King. Honestly, it was kind of underpriced at like. I think it was priced at like something i don't know something ridiculous let's see Nah, i'm not seeing any sometimes you'll see uh 255 ev train pokemon so you used to be able to ev train pokemon up to 255 evs but nowadays the game caps you at 252 and something happened where like the only pokemon that actually kept i used to have a bunch of of 255 EV trained Pokemon, but there was like a great reset or something or something that happened that capped them all 252. And um, the only Pokemon that actually stayed 255 were Pokemon that were like stored in players mail or like on the GTL. There was something, something like that. I don't actually know exactly, but there was something very specific slash strange that allowed some 255 EV trained Pokemon to exist. The reason why they changed the cap was because those three extra EVs from 252 to 255 actually do nothing. They're wasted. At level 100, four EVs equal one stat. So those extra three EVs were quite literally, didn't actually create a stat and were useless. So they just went ahead and capped it at 252 to make it a little more convenient and easier. Pat, what's your favorite shiny from Kanto? I did a Kanto shiny tier list at some point. Um, the S tiers for me are Dratini slash Dragonair. Um, Shelder is up there. Oddish? I just like Oddish. No, it's not like a common pick, but I like Oddish. I think there might be one more that I forget. But what I can think of is Shelder, Dragonair, Oddish. Thoughts on Legendary Lores? The effect, pretty typical. It's pretty normal. The effect of Legendary Lores is very good. They're way too expensive for what they're worth. Um... Legendary Lores are going to end up costing you multiple hundreds of thousands of Poke Yen per hour. And there is still going to take you multiple hours to get your Legendary. Like, I'm pretty sure they take around... I'm pretty sure they end up being around 300,000 Poke Yen per hour. Something like that. So, if it, even at 300k per hour, if it lowers the rate to thir down 30%. So, we don't know the exact Legendary rate in Pokemon, so we're going to have to guess. So, let's say that it's the middle ground. Let's say it's around five, 1 out of 5k for the Legendary rate. That makes around sense, right? Let's do that times 0.30. That's going to give us mi minus 1,500. So we do 3,500. So let's say, let's say that for sake of the argument, legendary lore makes the, sh the legendary rate one out of 3,500, right? And let's say that you do around 300 encounters per hour while single encountering. That's pretty normal, right? So divided by 300, Just wishing you 12 hours. So imagine taking... 12 let's say yeah 12 hours times 300,000 pokey yen per hour you're spending 3.6 million pokey yen just to save like four to six hours on your legendary hunt if you're making like a million pokey yen per hour at some money making method then maybe that's worth it but like that's pretty that's pretty point point zero 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 one percent that's not many people that's ridiculous i would never do that legendary lures are fun and they're exciting hyper financially not worth it Man, Champion Black is asking me for tips on how to find motivation to finish the last two regions of a storyline on an alt account. Dude, I'm going to be totally honest. I hate storylines. They burn me out more than anything. If you are burnt out from the storylines, simply take a break. Go play a different game. Go shiny hunt in your main account. Go do something else and come back because... In my opinion, if you're burnt on storylines, they're just going to be miserable, insufferable, so much pain, so much annoyance um having alt accounts done are incredible and having you know all the storylines done on them are incredible but like maybe just take the benefits of those three you know regions being done for a little bit and then go do something else i just i would really recommend just taking a break if you're stuck on storyline burnout because that stuff i understand that a lot i hate that stuff i'd rather shiny hunt for 500 hours than play through like two storylines like storylines whew, they are maybe even once at once i hate it's annoying to me after all you know after all these hours on it I caught a Smeargle a few days ago. I leveled him up to level 100 without without learning him moves. That's totally okay. You can go ahead and um, 
You can actually heart stale. If he's level 100, you can actually heart stale and relearn sketch on him three or four times or whatever you need to. Uh, you can actually always relearn sketch on Smeagol using heart scales, which is super nice. Do you have a favorite video that stands out to you? Yes. One of my favorite videos I've ever made is my rare shiny hunting, my rare egg hunting guide. Uh, it's not, it doesn't get that many views. It's not that popular because it's just not that, not that many people have the Pokeyen and the time to egg hunt, right? But it's one of the most in-depth guides I've made. And I, I've spent, you know, thousands of hours rare hunting and egg hunting. So it made sense. I had a lot of passionate opinions and I think, I think some pretty good detailed little tips and tricks that other people may not know. Um, I, I'm really proud of it. I put some editing into that video as well. I'm very proud of my rare shunting god. I'm not proud of every video I put out, but that video I'm very proud of. Do you think Mal Magic Guard uh, Alakazam will ever be added? Absolutely. Because uh, Alakazam is pretty weak right now. I think it actually could totally be added in. Maybe it would be a relevant threat again, either in OU or UU. But right now, uh, Alakazam is in NU, and I'm pretty sure it's even struggling in NU. Look at this. Oh, dude. How much power creep is happening? Look at this. 6% usage, 45% win rate for Alakazam and NU. For newer age Pokemon fans, this may seem obvious, but dude, for people who played Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4, Alakazam was a like a top tier OU threat for, for a decade or two. Like that's crazy, you know? Yeah, what are the plans for today? Mostly just shiny hunting. I might do some breeding for profit. Breeding for profit's just so insane right now. Like it's actually catching for profit not good right now i don't recommend it breeding for profit fucking insanely turbo good um you can make some like 300 400k per hour consistently on tons of different pokemon tons of different sets like there are so many insane pokemon to breed for profit and i have tons of videos on how to breed for profit i'm too dumb to breed for profit it's intimidating learning breeding especially breeding for profit is intimidating and it can be tough to learn but once you get it it's it's super powerful and the more people that breed for profit the less profitable it'll become. And if more people breed for profit right now, it'll eventually bring back the catcher's, catcher's market. You know, it's really just a rubber band. Like the more people that catch for profit, it makes it so that Pokemon that with one time 31s and two times 29 IVs become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So then breeding for profit becomes better and better and better. And then the more people that switch, once you know, it becomes a breeder's market, people switch over to breeding and breed a bunch for profit. And then it kind of becomes more, then you need more one step 31s and two so it becomes more profitable to go catching again. And it kind of, the whole Pokemon market is very genius. It's very balanced and very rubber bandy back and forth, depending on what's going on. The Pokemon devs are like econ economists. And there was a rumor for a while, and I don't know if it's true or not, that the Pokemon devs brought in and like hired economists to solve their economy because it was so fucked. It was, it was, the game was dying. Like back in with their breeding system, back in like 2014, or whatever. I'm, it was rumored they like hired some people to bring in like professionals to, to help develop them some systems that would make it so that their economy would work. And I always say if, if an economy in a game, in an MMO dies, the game dies. It's just, it's really that simple. It's that important. Uh, why is the Pokemon dev team so small? Is it a lack of budget or do they just like to keep their team small to control everything? You pretty much nailed it to control everything. It's probably a mixture of those factors. I don't mean, obviously no one, this is all speculation. No one really knows. Um, the Pokemon dev team is super secretive and they, they really don't like to leak their code. It seems from what we understand, they don't seem to like to share their code with other people. I've only ever seen them hire one extra new developer over the entire history of the game. And that new developer was hired specifically to work on iOS code and create the game onto iOS. So they just didn't have that experience, which makes a lot of sense. Um, it's, yeah, they are very, very secretive with their code. So I, I would probably argue it's probably more than that and than, than budget, but I could be wrong. Um, I don't know, it depends. Is Riolo still able to be found in the Johto Safari Zone? Yes, but it's only available on certain days. Uh, you do have to go check, actually. But hilariously, um, Re shunting Riolu in the Safari Zone is actually the best way to shunt it, which is really crazy, because obviously it can run, and it's still the best. Even if you get a few runs, it's still ideal. Um, but it, it only is there on certain days, and I don't know the I don't know which day. I don't even know how to exactly check. Someone in my Discord would probably know that a little better than me. If you look at the shiny hunting channel on his discord, they put out the schedule every single day. Well, you look at that. My discord fucking carrying me as per usual. Here is 56,000 encounters. It's always cool to get an extra 1k milestone. Uh, quick question. I'm trying to get some friends into Pokemon and they say they don't get it when it comes to money making in the game. What would your response to my friends be? Sorry for the spam. Hmm. They don't get it. I would just try to, what I would do is I would try to Firstly, it may not be the game for them, and that's okay, right? 
If it's just not the game for them, fair enough, but try to get them to care about some sort of goals. It's really hard to care about progression and really hard to care about making Pokien and all of these things if you don't even know what the end game goals are in the game, right? Um, I've had this problem with certain games in the past. Like, why would I spend all this time making Pokien and stuff if I don't even know what I'm going to spend it on, right? So I would let them know, like, hey, like, this is... Introduce them to shiny hunting, to PvP, to EV training and XP training and, and collecting competitive Pokemon. Introduce them to all these things. Introduce them to vanities. Introduce them to PvP tournaments. Um, introduce them to all the... Introduce them to raids. Show them some guides and what that looks like and stuff. Like... Some people, they'll see all that and be like, oh, I'm not really interested in any of that. So you know what? Not my game. That's totally okay. But show them the goals. And if they're interested in them, then they'll have that drive to go complete those goals and work towards them. Yeah. Pokemon without goals becomes tiring really fast. Pokemon without goals is the worst, is like the worst game, you know? Like you need goals to enjoy Pokemon. It's the same as I always compare it to old school Minecraft. Like you could play Minecraft Alpha infinitely with, with plenty of goals set. But as soon as you get full diamond armor and run out of goals, a lot of people just quit. But if you're that player who kept building cobblestone castles in the sky, giant glass domes, you know, trying to acquire all of that juicy um, uh, glowstone back in like Minecraft Alpha when that was like the rarest resource, like you're going to do a really good job in Pokemon if you enjoy those kind of setting your own goals and making your own adventures within an open world. Or you can introduce them to gambling and loot boxes. <laughs> okay, well, that's one option, I guess, if you want to get them truly addicted. Wouldn't recommend it, though. I've had this question a lot recently. Do you think it's too late to invest in mysterious balls? And I can't answer that question for you. That's financial advice. I can give you my thoughts and my opinions, um, and I can show you... I can show you the the data and like on Pokemon hub and show you like how far mysterious balls have come so far but I'm, i cannot tell you guys whether or not to invest in mysterious balls that's like asking me hey do you think do you think it's too late to invest in bitcoin and it's like dude i i don't know like i don't i don't have the answer for that and my your financial stability and your financial success is not going to be hanging on my responsibility like i can give you the the facts and my thoughts and my opinions but i will not answer financial decisions or make make financial decisions for you guys i'm very sorry um i get those questions a lot um the data says it's not too late in my opinion that's a super reasonable opinion i think that's super fair and if that's your opinion i would go ahead and invest i think that's super fair uh yo pat what do you think about another pvp mode that swaps pokemon base stats every month technically making every pokemon in the game usable for a month um i mean that's it sounds like an interesting idea i like i think more so i see what you're looking you're looking for some sort of seasonal rotation that makes pokemon that aren't usually usable usable in my opinion a better way to achieve that goal wouldn't be the base stat swapping i but do something like a, a limited dex pool right imagine imagine a pvp meta game where you like don't have that many um like the only quiver dance user is like master rain and like the power level in general is like much much lower or some shit like that like i think there are some cool meta games you could create um kind of how you know traditional pokemon has different dex restrictions and different er eras like that and then uh in pokemon go in pokemon go every few months they like ban out the most like broken type like fairy type for example is like i think banned out this month for great league um ill type for example it'll also ban out certain um like pokemon specifically like if that pokemon was like top 10 or top 50 they'll ban those for like the next month rotation that's very very cool i think stuff like that in a different in a different metagame could be neat but it kind of encounters the same issues why there isn't ru slash pu in the game which is the there's a lack of the lack of players actually playing and queuing up for those varieties in those uh those ranks or in those tiers so like if you have to wait if you have to wait like an hour and a half to play one of those games is it really worth to have that tier like at that point instead of adding a seasonal pvp thing like that i would be way more encouraging of just adding ru slash pu to have straight up hardcore more balance around the actual like main gameplay loop um i, I but i've been saying for since like 2015 2017 that Pokemon needs RU slash PU. And it just, in my opinion, it desperately does. There's way too many Pokemon to only have three tiers. Not enough cool Pokemon can shine. I would love to see like Primeape become like a really good threat in PU, for example, or, or even RU. Like there's just so many Pokemon that could be awesome in RU and PU and make them more usable, add more demand to the economy for those good IV Pokemon. Um, I would I would I would do a lot of content covering RU and PU and really showing off those tiers and really trying to encourage people to play them because 
man, could be a lot of fun. Hey, Pat, new player here. Your content's been so helpful. Well, thank you so much. Uh, just beat my first region. Should I immediately go to my next region, or is there something I should do before swapping regions for the first time? In my opinion, I'm a huge advocate. It depends on how much you like storylines. I'm a huge advocate of encouraging players to finish one storyline and then do a little bit of endgame grinding, right? So finish one storyline and then breed some Pokemon or EV train or something like that. And then go to another storyline. And then after that storyline, making some competitive Pokemon and then do another storyline. And after that, do some shiny hunting. And like, if you do this kind of um, storyline, endgame grinding, storyline, endgame grinding, what you do is you do a storyline, kind of get sick of storylines, go do some endgame grinding. Oh, okay. Do endgame grinding until you get sick of grinding. Break it up with some storylines. You can kind of like break up monotony a lot better. Um, and it also lets you find out by the time you complete all five storylines, you'll understand once you actually reach mid to mid to end game, what type of player you are. What do you care about? Do you like PVP? Do you like shiny hunting? Do you like collecting competitive Pokemon? Do you like utility Pokemon? Do you like just simply making Pokeyen? Do you like vanity collecting? Like what do you enjoy in the game? So slowly kind of coming to terms with that and testing everything out along your storyline uh journey i think is pretty important i recommend that how does a first timer go about shiny hunting smeargle this is a great question you have two options you could shiny hunt smeargle extremely slowly and passively and um catch a bunch of smeargle so you, you could do step one you could do number one slow and passive but make some money along the way or step two fast and aggressive get it done quick ish um, but it's going to cost you some pokey i would recommend step two if you have any amount of pokey but if you're new there's nothing wrong with the two options are uh false swipe sporing and just single encountering and like catching smeargles or even like paydaying the smeargles along the way that's like decent you'll make like 150k maybe like 100 to 150k pokey per hour and you'll get like th like you'll get very few encounters per hour though like 200 so keep that in mind maybe less um versus if you do times five hordes with lepas times five hordes with lepas in the smeardle cave in the artisan cave in hoenn is so good uh 1200 encounters per hour it's going to cost you around 3 million pokeyen to do the hunt but it's far well above and beyond worth it i yeah if you're gonna if you really just want shiny smeardle i would i would go for that but if you want to passively shunt for smeardle and make some money catching catching smeardles is just a good money making method for medium to beginner players so check that out you know i think it's super fair I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to head, I'm going to switch locations. We're going to head over to Sinnoh. We're going to do a quick honey tree route. And then we'll probably either head back over to our Sudowoodo spot. Or maybe even a new spot, you know? I, I just, I need to change locations. It's important when you're shining for this long. How come you never go back to your secret hideout? I hope the devs add more content for it eventually. I mean, yeah, you pretty much answered the question. I wish the secret hideout was useful. It's just like, it's fun to decorate and fun to grind for. But goddamn, is it just like... What's the point, you know? Um, I wish they were more beneficial, but there's just not really any tangible or pragmatic benefits to, to secret hideouts. And things don't need pragmatic benefits to be cool. Like, obviously, like shiny hunting, there's not really any pragmatic benefits to that. It's just fun to collect. But, man, secret hideouts, there's just, I don't know. There's nothing really, to, I don't have a drive or anything to do anything with. But I, I decorated them once, and then what do you do, you know? Kind of it. They should have it where if you find a secret base, you can take their hideout's flag and eventually trade hideout flags for prizes. That's cute. I like the idea of it actually being organized as like a quote unquote like secret. That's actually a really cute idea. That actually might be a good shout, Carlo. I could go repel trick in Unova for like Heracross or Pinsir. That'd be kind of a cool shunt at this many encounters. I could just do that as well at um right after this shunt. I wouldn't mind doing singles kind of early on here. Let's do some more. Let's sit to honey trees for, for the. We'll figure it out for the honey trees though. Do you think mysterious balls will come back again since cherish balls were a surprise? I feel like they probably will. I don't. I, how, how many are they going to start doing? The issue is they've already done mysterious, Pokeball, ball, great ball, ultra ball, cherish ball, and premier ball. Now are they going to just do like oh premier ball twenty twenty four like you know. Ultra Ball 24, or are they going to do like Mysterious, like Quick Ball and like Mysterious Dusk Ball? That'd be kind of interesting. Uh, will that ruin the game? Question mark, question mark. Now, while I don't think <sighs> Mysterious Balls ruin the game, I think Mysterious Balls are probably one of the worst updates for the game's integrity we've seen. I've done a ton of videos. So I don't want to like bore you guys with the same opinion, you know, just my opinion. 
Um, I feel like mysterious balls are one of the most problematic things we've ever seen. The ability to swipe your credit card and get a shiny within two hours is something we've never seen before. Um, the ability to pay to win to a shiny is really, really sad to me. Previously, no matter how much credit card you swiped, no matter how much Pokeyen you had, it would still be like a 24 to 30 hour hunt for a shiny on average, which I think is, you know, cool. Like, it does suck to me that you can now pay to win for once. I, I don't know, like, I would, I would, I would preferably not want to see Mysterious Balls return ever again, but we'll just kind of play it by ear. This is the last honey tree. Boom. Route done. No shiny. Where are we off to next, chat? So a lot of recommendations could go Meteor Falls, could go Repel Trick, could go Single Encounter Pattern Bush, could go back to Pseudo Wudo Spot. What are we feeling? Repel Trick sounds dope. You know what? I don't Repel Trick very much. I'm down to head over to Unova and try that. I have to remember. The problem is I don't remember what, what you need. Um, let's head over to Unova and see what's going on. Yeah, Repel Trick is very weird. You don't see many people. You don't see it that often. I think I do I need the level 50 or level 55 I don't remember let's double check the pokedex so the way I would check this is I would go to like oh like pincer heracross location in unova uh route 12 it seems like 50 or 55 depending on which one I'm in so 55 for dark grass I have my Doug trio for that so Doug trio I would go grab this guy I'll put with eradicate we don't need him oops so the way this works is you grab your Pokemon with a very specific level at a very specific location. This is all going to be super hyper dependent on location. You pop a repel and run back and forth in grass. And since my lead Pokemon is level 55, I will only encounter level 55 Pokemon in above, right? So I think it's like a 40% chance for me to end up with a shiny Pinsir slash Heracross here one of them and then it's like 60 percent chance for tranquil slash rapidash or some shit hopefully i get the 40 percent, you know get a little lucky but eventually you know it's not it's not a bad it's a really good chance for for that quote-unquote rare of a shiny you know the other thing is you have to burn through a lot of repels here so we'll see what happens let's see if you can get lucky today i would absolutely hate to get a another shiny rapidash that would actually suck so much a shiny tranquil would be fine not ideal but it'd be fine what is, in your opinion, the best payday pickup spot? I think people are split nowadays between Undella Bay and Dragon Spiral Tower. Um, I've had a lot of success at Dragon Spiral Tower. I could never really make that much Pokey in an Undella Bay, but maybe I was doing something wrong. Um, but I'm, I'm Dragon Spiral Tower gang. But some people swear by Undella Bay, especially now that heart scales are a little more expensive. So whatever works for you. Hey, Pat, this might be a new question, but can my Meowth still pick up an item if it's holding an item like Choice Scarf? Yes, it can. That's like not a noob question at all because at different eras in different time periods in Pokemo, it's operated in different ways, right? So like in 2013, when your Meowth picked up an item, it would go straight to, um, it would go to like the item slot. You have to like pull it off. So differently, right? And then at some point they changed it and then it's when they changed it back and they changed it. Like they've changed the way that's worked a couple times. So it's a super, like, depending on if you've played before and come back to the game, you may not know how it operates at this current time. Is selling TMs for a small profit a good money-making strat? My honest answer is I don't know. Intuitively, I would think it can't be that good, but you see it a lot, right? You see it a lot where people will go to the, the shopping mall, buy Earthquake TMs, right, for 30k, and then list them for a little more, like 33k-ish, like here. And People like myself, I even buy these sometimes to save the convenience. Like sometimes I'll pay the extra 3K to have the convenience factor of not having to go uh, walk over to the Unova shopping mall. So like they do sell. I sell, I buy them sometimes. Um, it's good to avoid it if you need a bunch of TMs, but you know, um, I don't know if it's a good money-making method. I'd love to do a video testing that at some point. I think it'd be super, super interesting. That might be the most W's I've ever seen in my chat after giving a food take. I've never seen my chat ever agree with me on any food take. The food take I gave was that banana peppers might be arguably the best vegetable. They're so, so, so underrated. Banana peppers are so, so, so phenomenal. Um, I feel like they're not offered at enough places or in enough foods. Banana peppers are turbo, turbo good. That's the food take of the day. Yeah, one of the best examples of like shiny power creep, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It has to happen at one point or another, essentially. Um, 
It can be bad if the pace is quick, too quick, but whatever. That's not the point of the subject. One of the most, one of the biggest examples of shiny power creep is Rapidash. How like literally shiny Rapidash is seen as like one of the most common shinies in the game. It's seen as like comparable-ish to Tenacruel, right? It's one of the most common. XP, it's over here, right? A lot of people come right here to XP train and EV train speed, right? It's a really, really good, uh, just EV training spot for. It's really a good shiny spot for beginners, XP spot for beginners, and solid EV training spot for everybody. Um, dude, back in 2013, 2014, 2015, Rapidash and Ponyta were some of the most desired shinies. Like, both of those shinies were literally hunted so much by so many people. They were so desired and so sought after. It's really interesting to see, like, how far stuff like that has fallen. Uh, once again, it's not always a bad thing, but it's just, it's just interesting to look back on and have that perspective. Do you think new players are late to the Pokemon party? Not at all. I almost did an entire rant video talking about this topic because I keep seeing this pop up recently where people are like, new players can't catch up. Like, oh, like it's too late to start Pokemon. And it's just, it's not true like at all. Like be because the game has changed so much and we were so bad. Like only over the past two years, I would say, have Pokemon players like gotten even remotely good, myself included. Like we were just so bad at the game for so long. Um, hordes didn't exist. We were so inefficient. Like the community was so decently small for so long and there were so few content creators. So we weren't really like, many people didn't have like that much perspective, right? Like maybe you would like see your teammates, right? And you would see like, some of your friends and like their progress but like you didn't see how much progress other people could make you didn't know the potential right the less you're exposed to the less you kind of learn unless you realize how much you can do but when i started making videos when other people started doing huge challenges like flipping to a billion pokean or whatever um you realized how much you can progress so quickly and like what good methods are good the money making methods like all information just as a whole becoming way more widespread has only really been a thing for the past two years in Pokemon. The game was so bad for so long. Um, and there wasn't, we not, I think it was about, we were so bad as players. Sorry, we as players were so bad. I always compare it to like Classic WoW, right? Or like World of Warcraft in general, right? People look back at Classic WoW and they thought it was like, or like, not sorry, not Classic WoW, but Vanilla WoW. People thought Vanilla WoW was really, 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 really hard, so difficult really mechanically challenging all these things and then classic wow came out and everybody realized like oh shit we were actually just really bad at the game like it actually it you know it was hard in some ways but like all the raids and stuff that were seen as like mechanically impossible and took like three months for anybody to beat were beaten like day one at when they were re-released right because everybody knew the strats everybody had been used to like other more difficult rating in like retail wow um it's 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 perspective and years and age so like as Pokemon's aged, we've gotten so much better at it. And like you can, you can, the point is you can progress so quickly as a new player. You can reach that of a medium level or end game player within a few weeks, maybe even a month or a few months. Um, you can progress so quickly if you seek out and pursue the game knowledge via videos, via forum posts and stuff that just didn't exist for a very, very long time. Um, it is absolutely not too late in any way to start playing Pokemon. You, you can, I, I would love to do, there's a reason why I do challenges like Road to Pokemon and starting from scratch to show people that you can progress super quickly. I'm excited that once, once raids release, I plan to bring back that sort of challenge and bring back a uh, starting Pokemon from scratch, new account, and then getting all the way up to completing my first raid. And I might be able to do that within a day. Um, probably decently easily. We'll see. You can progress really quickly. It's a lot of, you have to understand it does take time. It does take energy and it does take game knowledge. But if you have those, and progress way quicker than people have been playing it for 10 years you know i started a couple days before the lunar new year event release and i was able to do all 12 raids the community is so good compared to other games if you put effort into looking for answers then you can accomplish anything on pokemon i love your fucking attitude jay zord i super believe that um some people don't and that's okay you know it's fine it's fine to disagree with me that's totally okay but i think it's uh sometimes there's truth to it sometimes it's a little trope you know I'm going to be honest with you guys, okay? Because I'm always honest with you guys. You know what I want to do right now? 
I want to go play Guitar Hero. So I'm going to go ahead and call the stream there. A nice little four hour stream. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, always make sure to leave a like on these videos. It just helps out a ton. Dislike if not, that's okay. Subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon videos. I do upload every single day. I also stream four times a week, Monday through Thursday on Twitch at 12 p.m. ET. Discord's down below for updates on my content. And if you want to go above and beyond and support my content, if it's helped you out enough or entertained you enough in the background while you grind Pokemon, YouTube memberships, Twitch Primes, Twitch Subs, and PayPal slash Venmo literally allow me to do this. I could not do it without those people. So thank you. If you're on this list at the end of the stream, you allow me to do it. You're fucking awesome. You're cool. You've got a big smile, which I appreciate it. Uh, and thank you guys so much. Have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Peace of Reno. Hey, thanks so much for watching the entire video all the way to the end. I really appreciate that, and I hope it was a positive asset to your day. And I also want to quickly say extra thank you to everybody whose name is on this list and goes above and beyond and allows me to do what I do. Thank you very much. Have a good one.